Invest Africa, proudly brought to you by KPMG. Welcome to this week's edition of Invest Africa. I'm Nozi Pombanjwa. Now, Africa's automotive industry is currently undergoing a rapid change. While South Africa's automotive industry was under pressure due to labor unrest recently, Nigeria's car industry is set to get a major boost as the government begins the implementation of its new automotive development plan. Could Nigeria be the next manufacturing hub? Joining me now in the studio to take a closer look at Africa's automotive industry is Kun Rod Bazaden, Holt Executive Director at Manufacturing Circle. Also have Robert Hoodet, Director at NACAM, and Simon Schaefer, Senior Analyst at Frontier Advisory Services. Welcome. Thank you, gentlemen, for making the time to, uh, to join us today. Let me come to you first, Robert, and allow you to paint the broad landscape. What are the key trends that are defining the automotive industry on the continent at this time? In Africa, the gross domestic product or practically all the countries is growing, growing very fast. So there's a demand for vehicles, again, all over Africa. And all over South Africa has been, the automotive sector has grown its automotive sector for the last 30, 40, 40 years. Uh, other countries are attracting the automotive industry. So you mentioned at the beginning concerning Nigeria, but yeah. two years ago, Morocco attracted Renault. So Renault has set up a plant in, in Morocco and has attracted quite a few suppliers of components in Morocco. So before Nigeria, there's already a world player, a world player, a Morocco is coming in mm -hmm. as a major producer of vehicles. Nigeria might come in, but maybe we'll talk about it later. Absolutely, and I've, I do want to get uh, insights into the manufacturing capacity in Nigeria. I'll come to you with that, Conrad, but before I do that, let me first come to you, Simon, and, and, and let's talk about emerging markets and how they are changing the industry. From a manufacturing point of view, um, yes. Um, well obviously, if you, if you look at, for example, places like China, they have been the manufacturing hub of the world um, in recent years. Mm. India stepping in. In, um, in Africa, we haven't seen that much yet. Um, a couple of countries are trying to attract um, manufacturing investments. For example, in Zambia, they've established special economic zones, trying to boost um, investments in the manufacturing sector. And, and let's then come uh, to this question on Nigeria, Conrad. Let's look at uh, the attempts uh, by the Nigerian government. Do you think that uh, this uh, manufacturing hub is likely to happen? Well, I, I think there's certainly potential uh, for it to happen. It, it's, a, it's a large and a growing market. Uh, and uh, there's demand for all sorts of uh, uh, consumer goods, uh, as, uh, particularly as people start to urbanize and, mm. and use things that we use in cities like trolley doors and and knives and forks and, and whatever the case might right. be. Uh, and, and, and also then for the automotive sector. Uh, the, the thing is that we in South Africa uh, need particularly to realize that, that you know industrial policy is not only our province, there's other countries too, Botswana, Zambia has just been mentioned, Kenya, Angola, uh, Nigeria, all of those countries are looking to industrial policy, uh, policy as a tool <laughs> To grow their manufacturing base, because as the the EU economic uh, sorry the uh, the uh, uh, UN's uh, Africa Commission has uh, also noted, uh, there uh, there is we do need to establish manufacturing as a significant power of the economy on the African continent if we are going to provide the type of employment that we need in Africa, uh, unskilled jobs, jobs for youth, uh, and so on. And uh, those manufacturing jobs, in turn, and the skills that they bring, mm. will also be very important to uh, regenerate our small business sector and help grow new ventures and innovation. Of course, uh, there's also been uh, mention of the fact that Nigeria has insisted on uh, investors coming in with an assembly plant at the very least. And let me come to you, Simon, before I come back to you, Robert, on that. Uh, do you think that African governments, or where the hotspots are, are doing enough in terms of attracting investors and how do they balance that with the need to develop their local industries? I guess they can do more. Yeah. Um, that's in a nutshell. Um, I think we also have to distinguish what kind of investment you're attracting or do you want to attract. Um, what is important about investment is that not necessarily that you can tick a box and say I've attracted two billion US dollars of investment. Mm. What's crucial is that when you attract investment you have to in attract investment that actually benefits your economy. So um, by saying that, I mean you need to attract investment that bring along um, intellectual property um, and IP in, in general where you can build an economy on it, not just 
money and that's it. But Robert, of course, you've already mentioned that we've seen Morocco um, as well as Nigeria coming up, and it seems as if there might be other hotspots for investment that are slightly overlooked, especially in light of the fact that there are maybe troubling trends uh, in, in the South African market. Where else should investors be looking? Again, I repeat, investors are looking at Africa, especially the Chinese. They are looking at the countries on the, situated on the east coast of Africa, and they are setting up plants there quietly, but they are penetrating the African market. Uh, I also mentioned that uh, Jolo Motors has a plant in Egypt, and the managing director was telling me the other day that they manufacture 50,000 cars in Egypt on Jolo Motors, but might, there might be other OEMs present in Egypt. Concerning uh, Nigeria, my personal feeling is that uh, Nigeria has killed its industry, especially its automotive industry, in the last 10, 15, 20 years. We had several OEMs present and they all left the country. Now uh, Nigeria is trying to get back to be on the automotive sector. But my feeling is that the governments are given heavy subsidies to compensate the risk of investing in Nigeria because Nigeria is a very risky country. So what went wrong the first time round now that they're seeking to revive the sector? What went wrong is very simple. They were a, it was a country which was very rich in agriculture, in manufacturing. They discovered petrol and that was the end of manufacturing and agriculture. Let's uh, maybe shift the conversation a little bit. Conrad, I want to bring you in on local content rules and how they uh, you know, make it attractive or not attractive for investors to come in. What should governments be doing to, to balance the scale? Look, uh, I think local content is important, but uh, we also have to recognize that, there's, uh, that, uh, that supply chains have globalized. Mm. And, so, and so intermediate goods are, are needing to be imported so that we can assemble uh, and, and produce uh, uh, locally in certain instances. Also because uh, these uh, big automotive manufacturers will, um, will uh, if there's a specific part or a design, in order to, to uh, achieve the greatest efficiencies, they might allocate that to a, a single global supplier manufacturing in one, uh, in one area. So for instance, windscreens for certain of the cars that are being manufactured in South Africa are being imported from uh, America. Uh, and and so, so that kind of thing you, you will see. I think what is more effective rather is to have the right incentive structure in place to leverage what uh, competitiveness you already have and of course not do uh, the kind of stuff that we've been doing in South Africa to decimate uh, any sort of positive <laughs> impact that the incentives may have. Simon, would you agree with some of the statements that, that have been made, especially around uh, local content and the incentives that need to be in the market? And I ask this in, 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 in a broader sense where maybe you can share with us, what are the key indicators that investors are still likely to look for before they bring in uh, any sort of investment, whether it's in the form of assembly plants or a full manufacturing base? Um, one of the, the key components or key aspects, I think, would be um, a stable economy stable political system. So as um, Robert alluded to, in Nigeria that situation is a bit different to, for mm. example, places like South Africa. Mm. But in South Africa there was a very interesting development recently. South Africa um, determined, cancelled the investment, um, bilater bilateral investment treaties with European Union countries. Right. That sends out a very interesting message to the market. Um, so policy framework is important, yes. Um, consistency of policies is very important. Um, a certainty, an environment of certainty is very crucial. I mean, I understand that these uh, bilateral treaties, and, and, and particularly last week we had the cancellation of yet another one, have they had an impact on the industry? Has it shown yet, or is there a lag period that we should be expecting? Um, I've been talking to, to contacts in Germany, and they're saying it sends out the wrong message. Mm. Um, there might be a good reason why they're renegotiating or want to reno renegotiate those um, treaties, but the way it was done was made the wrong way. Of course, another big aspect about the South African automotive industry, uh, Robert, is the labor issues. Um, and if you can talk to those, and also let's perhaps look at uh, what does South Africa's exports into the rest of Africa look like as compared to um, other partners like the European Union? Uh, in fact, uh, the growth of the automotive sector, of the, our exports into Africa, is is growing very very fast some OEMs are penetrating uh, Africa quite aggressively 
And that's very, very encouraging because this Africa is growing, it's a growing market, and we must, South African products must find themselves in these markets at the early beginning and capture these markets. So to me, it's a very good effort that the OEMs are doing. Um, and, On the, and, the, and then the aspects of labor? The labor dispute has sent, has sent the wrong message to the outside world. I keep repeating, uh, decisions are being taken whether to come to South Africa, these decisions are being taken yesterday, today and tomorrow. Mm. And you send the wrong message, these people uh, who see South Africa as a risk country, because what happens when there's, a, uh, when there's a strike is that we don't send our products to our foreign buyers. And what happens, these factories there can get stopped and there's a risk. And the people who buy, the procurement people, the logistics people, they are not getting the products. Mm. And tomorrow when decisions are going to be taken, whether we should buy from South Africa or not, they'll raise up their hand and say South Africa is a, is a risky country because of labor strikes, we cannot afford that. But please, this is the past to me and the future. It's very important to look into the future. And um, my attitude is that OEMs, the component sector, labor, must speak with one and only language. We cannot have uh, people having diff different agendas. And my request or my call is for us, the three parties, to come together and sort out our issues before the next round of negotiations in three years' time.